There you go. Okay, recording. All right, well, it's 17.05, let's get started. Um, so the agenda today uh, includes a, uh, a board meeting update from Keith Elliston um, and a, a subsequent uh, update on the BioIT World activities. Um, many of us at the foundation and some of you uh, attended BioIT World in Boston. Um, so we have a bit of news from, uh, from that event. Um, Rudy is also going to talk about some upcoming events, including the I2B2 Symposium in Boston and the 2016 Transmart Annual Meeting, which is beginning to come together. We have dates and a location, so I think you'll be uh, interested in hearing about that. Um, a development update on the, the three versions that are currently in process. And then today we have uh, Niels from ITTM, who will be showing us the, uh, the newly developed and newly released uh, Ingenuity IPA connector for Transmart. Um, this was announced at BioIT World, and it's a very exciting uh, uh, bit of functionality that we expect to include in the 16.2 release. So um, Niels is here to give us a, a demo of that, uh, that product. So I'll turn it over to Keith for the board update. Great. Thanks, Keith. Uh, as you all know, uh, at the recent BioIT World meeting, uh, we had our, our quarterly board meeting. <clears throat> Uh, we have four board meetings per year. Uh, two are by teleconference, two are face-to-face. -face. Uh, this was one of our face-to-face -face meetings. We had a number of things that we, uh, we went through and addressed. One of the, the more important one is the annual election of directors. Um, as you know, we have uh, uh, an election of silver members. Uh, each, silver, uh, each silver member is allowed to vote for uh, one member, they can nominate one member, and then uh, the members receiving the highest vote counts uh, are then elected to the board. Um, happy to, to welcome uh, three new uh, directors, uh, two new silver directors. Um, we have uh, Sherry Sal from Abdi uh, was direct elected to the board, um, and E.K. Go, um, who everyone knows uh, from Imperial College, uh, was also uh, was also elected to the board. Uh, we had another new director join the board. Uh, Jim Serum. Um, he's a, a colleague of mine from the past. Uh, he was formerly the uh, the chairman of the NIST Board of Governors. Um, he, uh, many years ago, ran the Life Sciences Division of Hewlett Packard and has been very active uh, in government and science uh, and venture capital. So Jim has joined uh, the board as one of our at-large directors. Uh, we also re-elected a number of directors to the board um, overall. Uh, Brett Davis from uh, Deloitte was re-elected to the board. Uh, Herrit Meyer uh, from uh, the Trade Project was uh, uh, re-elected to the board. Jurgen Hammer from Roche. Eric Praxlis from T uh, Takeda. Uh, Hiroki Gitano from the Institute for Systems Biology in Japan. And Matteo Di Tommaso uh, from Biogen. Uh, we have uh, a number of things that we go through uh, overall uh, with the board in terms of getting a few things done. That, that was one of the key issues for us. So the new board has been seated, they're, uh, they're in place, and uh, the next election process that we'll go through uh, will be uh, next April as well. Uh, in terms of, of key issues for the board, the, the top issue and the one we spent the most time on was the, the project around the 17.1 release of Transmart, uh, the Transmart Pro project, and uh, we had an extensive set of discussions, a lot of work that's ongoing there, and I have to say this is, is the main focus uh, for the foundation currently. Next slide, Keith. There we go. Uh, to give you a quick update on the Transmark Pro project, um, we've been pulling together a set of key stakeholders that would like to participate in jointly funding and managing the Transmark Pro project. Uh, the project is, is generated around the, the key enhancements and capabilities that we'll be bringing into the 17.1 release uh, and subsequently. Uh, the groups that are interested, oh, Keith, I think we lost the slide. Oh. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I dropped over to Rudy. Oh, I just made, sorry, I made Rudy a presenter. That was too, that was... Um, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Um, hang on a sec. So, uh, as I was saying, we, uh, we've been working to bring together a key set of stakeholders that will uh, ultimately form the governing committee for the alliance. Uh, currently, the, the groups that are in, in deep and detailed discussions um, are uh, Roche. Uh, you don't want to make me the presenter. You want to be the presenter, Keith. 
Oh, that's right. I made you the yeah. Um, and uh, uh, we have Roche, uh, we have Pfizer, uh, Sanofi, uh, and AbbVie are the, the key groups making up that stakeholder group. Um, we are going through a process of refining requirements and organizing funding. Uh, currently, we have circled around the table uh, commitments for uh, approximately 650,000 investment. We need to bring another 100,000 investment to be able to kick off this alliance and get the, the, the developments underway. Uh, any companies that are interested in participating in this uh, at any level, uh, please let me know. Um, I'll be reaching out to a number of you, but if you have interest specifically, contact me, Keith.Elliston at transmartfoundation.org, uh, and I can get you tied into the process. Uh, the committee that's pulling this all together has been headed up by Matteo Di Tommaso from Biogen. Uh, Matteo has stepped up as one of our board members to really help organize uh, this this effort uh, as a, a board activity and uh, has been doing a great job in helping organize these groups uh, to come together with respect to their interest and requirements. Uh, a key step along the, along the process will be to take uh, the results from the requirements exercise that we went through, uh, which we presented several weeks ago, um, and integrating these among the various stakeholders for the Transmark Pro project. Uh, Keith Nangle is putting together a meeting this week. Is that Wednesday, Keith? Yeah, it's tomorrow. Correct. So, uh, so tomorrow, Keith will be bringing together uh, representatives from Pfizer, Sanofi, Roche, and AbbVie uh, to integrate their requirements into a single set of requirements to drive the project. Again, if there are any other groups that are interested in committing funding to the project, uh, you will be welcome to join those discussions. Um, once that is complete, uh, John O'Hara will be organizing a set of vendor workshops. Uh, we have two vendors that are working together, or I should say working uh, to, to participate here. Those are the Hive uh, and the Converge Health Group by Deloitte. Uh, we will have two workshops, one uh, with the Hive and the various uh, groups that are participating, one with Deloitte. And the goals of those workshops are to go through the requirements in detail and enable these groups to put together a specific proposal to address those requirements. Um, once we have those updated vendor proposals, which will be due by the 25th of April, uh, we will have a vendor selection meeting where the stakeholders for this project will come together to select a vendor proposal to be moving forward with. Uh, at that point in time, the foundation will work to uh, come to contract and agreement so that we have business terms in place, and we will have a kickoff meeting sometime the week of May 18th uh, where we come together with the selected vendor and the key stakeholders to begin the development project. So a lot of work has been going into this. Um, I want to thank you know, everyone who has participated in this, you know, both from the requirements generating project that uh, John O'Hara, Keith Nangle, and Ken Kubota worked on, uh, interviewing people throughout the community, uh, and then working, uh, Matteo stepping up and working with uh, Pfizer, Sanofi, Roche, and AbbVie to really help them come to a singular vision for what they want to accomplish so that we at the foundation can work to accomplish that vision. Uh, this has been a, a very important process, a very detailed process, and I want to thank everyone that's been involved, uh, and I hopefully uh, will look forward to a very successful project moving forward beginning uh, in mid-May. Next slide, Keith. One thing I wanted to be very clear on uh, for the community is what the role of the foundation is in this process. And the role of the foundation is really to, to help provide overall strategic direction. And let me make sure that I, I define what we mean by the foundation. The foundation is not the set of, of people that work here um, behind the four virtual walls of the foundation itself uh, with the business process. The foundation is the community. It is all the members, all the stakeholders of the community that come together as a community. And what the, the role of the foundation and the community are is to provide that strategic direction and technology vision for the platform, to really make sure that we have a singular strategic direction and a singular vision uh, to provide a, a pre-competitive uh, funding model that is a way to bring together companies that might otherwise be in a competitive situation to do pre-competitive collaboration to develop you know commonly useful technology and to do this in a way that we don't have to worry about any sort of antitrust or anti-competitive kinds of, of, of mechanisms. The next key role is to define the initial set of requirements to initiate a project that's what we've done in this case doing the requirements uh, uh, generation project. And then as the community comes together with a key set of stakeholders to really manage the contracting process and to bring the, the selected vendor and the selected project uh, to a contract that we can then manage and move forward on. And then as that project goes forward, the vendor is really responsible for, for the development under the direction of the governing committee. 
Um, and when that software is completed, the foundation will work with that vendor to ensure that those developments uh, make it into the release process and make it into the release overall. This is part of the management and governance of the code base that we provide through the project management committee. Uh, another key thing that we're interested in doing, and again I'll put out the call to people, anyone interested in participating in this project, and even a level of $50,000 and, and up, uh, come to me. Uh, what we'd like to do is bring additional potential funding partners to the table uh, to make sure that we can bring this project forward. The other thing that we will do, working with Rudy and with Keith Nangle, is manage the communications for the project to make sure this is an open and transparent project and that everyone is aware of the progress, the key issues that we're facing, and, and in fact the, the deliverables and the results that will come from this. So the foundation is working very diligently. Uh, we're really happy that uh, the members of the community are stepping up to participate and help drive this forward. And, and I think the main role of the foundation here is to, to really help the community organize itself into that singular vision and to come together as a community to be able to fund the development of the platform as we move it forward. So really excited about the project, a lot of work going on, and if anyone has interest in participating at any level, uh, please uh, let me know and I will help plug you into the process. So Keith, I think that's it for me. Okay, thanks Keith. Um, I think now we'll have an update uh, from Rudy on BioIT World and Rudy, I think you're unmuted. Give that a try. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, well, we were at BioIT World um, just two weeks ago, was it? And uh, had a, a really excellent week. Um, we had our booth uh, again uh, set up there. We had about 60 people came through during the two days. Um, and I, I tell them prospects, it's uh, interesting when people come to the booth and ask about the platform and want to know how much does it cost and things and to learn that it's open source. It's uh, always an interesting uh, conversation sometimes. Um, the thing that I, I really um, took away, which, which was different this year, was that uh, quite a few people who came through um, knew about Transmark the name, but didn't really know much about it. And so, uh, where last year, you know, a lot of our friends and people using the system wandered through, uh, this time we had uh, a number of folks who were coming specifically just to hear and learn about what Transmart is, and see, you know, sought us out uh, to come and take a look. Um, and you know, some of the, a few of these uh, are potential prospects. You know, for not only to become users of the platform, uh, but also prospective members and uh, a couple of vendors, potential new vendors who are interested in learning more about um, the, the the platform, the community, uh, et cetera. And so we'll have to see um, if some of those will uh, come come to fruition. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to to point out that uh, Hivey, the uh, the walking, breathing mascot of the Hive, also stopped by our booth, which was kind of fun. Uh, next slide. He's a lovable mascot. A lovable mascot, yeah. yes. <laughs> next slide. Um, so we also had the three C committees met, uh, and uh, on the the day before the conference started, uh, and um, I'm hoping that we'll get summaries from them. Um, we had about uh, 30 people, I think, uh, who uh, stayed and then came through each of the different committees, and we went through. Uh, a number of the, the current working activities uh, of the committees. And uh, I, as I say, I mean, I'm going to be chasing down the, the co-chairs, uh, including myself, to make sure we put a summary of the meeting onto the website. Next slide. There were several talks presented at the, um, uh, during the, the formal um, session as part of the conference. Uh, and these are the, the ones uh, listed here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few others that were also presented that we didn't know about, but um, you know we were at least mentioned or the, the subject of uh, these different talks, a couple from Pfizer, uh, Janssen, um, and uh, at least some of the description of what Amgen and, and Deloitte uh, are doing together, and uh, I know we were mentioned uh, there as well. Next slide. Rudy, I haven't had a chance to check. Are oh, they sorry. available on the BioIT website, do you know? Yes, several of them are available. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I'm copying them down, and I'll, I'll make them also available uh, if they're there on our website. Okay. Um, I do have a summary of the BioIT world uh, on the website, and so a lot of these things will be there, uh, including uh, we had our community meeting. So as tradition has been for the third year, uh, on the Wednesday evening during the conference, we had our community meeting. Um, this year it was hosted by uh, Thomson Reuters and the Pistoia Alliance. Uh, as well as our corporate sponsors, uh, GeneDX and uh, Rancho. Uh, and we held it at the Seaport Ballroom, which was really nice to be so close to the conference and um, 
uh, we were able to, to pull together, you know, the, uh, the, the group. And we had about, again, and 100 people uh, showed up once again. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, when you oh. put these together, you never really know how many people are going to show up. And that first slide down there is me fretting at the, you know, looking out at the empty seats, um, wondering if anybody was going to actually show up. Um, and uh, but as I say, we, we filled the seats. We had 100 people. And uh, I think it was, um, you know, people seemed to be quite, quite pleased overall. Next slide, there were um, several presentations, uh, including an update from Keith uh, and, and, and some nice food as well. Uh, we had an update from Keith on the foundation, um, uh, some of the activities during the week. We had uh, three, uh, four talks, uh, one by Thompson Reuters, Stephen Wicks, uh, talking about uh, some um, uh, uh, wearable sensors work that uh, they've been doing. Uh, an open clinic uh, transmart integration talk by Tatiana from Rancho. A very interesting talk on uh, our ETL loading procedures and comparing the different ETL loading processes um, that were there. And then Reinhard Schneider presented on Smart R with a surprise uh, demo on the uh, the uh, connector that we'll hear next uh, in the next talk. Uh, all of these presentations, the, the slide decks, uh, we, we didn't get them recorded, but all the slide decks are up on the website now, and you can review them. Next slide. Um, I want to talk also now about a couple of upcoming things. Um, we are having, uh, a, a, we are working with uh, Harvard Medical School and the I2B2 team there to um, uh, become part of their, their uh, uh, conference uh, set, which they have uh, two two days of meetings. One is the I2B2 Shrine group, which is I2B2 users talking about their activities and work on uh, I2B2. The second day is a precision medicine um, uh, uh, session uh, where they're focusing on rogue therapeutics. And then the third day will be I2B2 and Transmart. Um, uh, come, what the value might be bringing these together and, and focusing on what people are uh, doing today uh, in terms of using these together, and then uh, start talking about some of the, what we're doing in terms of evolving the platform. So we think it's uh, going to be a very interesting session. Uh, we will have an agenda pulled together within another you know, week, two, three weeks. Uh, and again, uh, information will be on the website. Next slide. Finally, um, we are announcing the, uh, we are set pick dates for our annual meeting. Uh, annual meeting will be held in October 18th to 20th. Um, uh, it will be held at the UC San Diego and La Jolla at their Atkinson's Hall, very nice facility, um, good presentation rooms, a lot of side rooms that are uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, we are pulling together our organizing committee. If you have specific interest and like to work, let me know. Uh, and uh, there will be more details on the website as we evolve this. But we're trying to get at least the, the keynotes um, set up and, and uh, the sessions that we're looking to do uh, a little bit earlier this year than we have in the past. So we're, we're hoping to have a lot of the agenda set before uh, the summer break uh, sits on us. So uh, there are forms and things on the website where you can contribute uh, your ideas, your suggestions, and also if you're interested in making a presentation or doing a poster. Uh, so this is all uh, available on the website, and I invite you to go to the website and check it out. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Rudy. Um, John, before we move on to the development update, I had a couple of questions come in about Transmart Pro that I think are worth answering for the rest of the attendees. One is, uh, will Transmart Pro be open source? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Everything that's done under this program will be available to the complete community. And the other question is, where can we get more information about Transmart Pro? And that's uh, basically my job. So um, there's nothing on the wiki yet, but by uh, first of next week, I'll have a page up on the wiki that uh, uh, has the information as it develops on Transmart Pro, and we'll keep that updated throughout the course of the program. So uh, look for that next week on the wiki.transmartfoundation.org. Okay, um, so John, now we're going to have a development update. Um, here's the standard uh, roadmap slide that we've seen before. And John, are you on the same? Uh, 
Yes, absolutely. So we okay. can certainly see that. So the development update for release 16.1, obviously, is uh, that we had planned on releasing this earlier this month, and we uh, announced that we were going to delay that. Uh, functionally, the delay was to uh, towards the end of this month. And again, we're assessing this on a day-by-day -day basis. The uh, JIRA items right now are released, uh, re uh, reduced down to 21 blocking bugs, of which 12 are with the data and 9 are with the source code. Uh, these are being worked on by a number of individuals. And in fact, uh, starting today, we're going to be reaching out to some members of the community to help us resolve some of the bugs in code that they have, in fact, um, submitted uh, uh, before or have been involved with before so that we can try and accelerate the, the conclusion of these 21 issues. Uh, at present, um, you know, we're having daily stand-up meetings amongst the development team members to uh, manage this down to zero blocking bugs. And again, this is, uh, you know, targeted for the 25th. I, I would... Uh, I would anticipate that it'll be possibly a few days late, but we're working as diligently as we can to hold it to the 25th. Um, the uh, PMC meeting this Thursday will be a crucial PMC meeting for the release, and, and, uh, and we're going to definitely be discussing the remaining open bugs and discussing with the PMC whether or not we uh, might recommend uh, uh, deferring any of them to a later release. But again, uh, I will encourage all PMC members in the community, and uh, I think we're going to be reaching out a little bit, a little bit more broadly to welcome some new members in. Uh, but again, uh, this this uh, this meeting this Thursday is going to be targeted at explaining what the open issues are and talking about what what will and will not be uh, the final blocking issues. If you can move on to the next slide, please. I'm assuming we have a 62. Yep. Sorry. Slow. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, the development update for 16.2. Basically, we're going to be branching the code, uh, branching the code for 16.2 uh, uh, shortly after the release, or perhaps even shortly before it. But the goal basically is not to branch it, uh, you know, too much before the the release is out. The key areas that we've talked about, including as plugins. Uh, obviously, Smart R, which is making good progress, and uh, that's probably the anchor feature that we'd like to get into 16.2. The uh, XNAT uh, neuroimaging uh, software, of which there are two target plugins uh, as well. Uh, some ICE tool improvements for loading data, GWAS extensions from Pfizer. And this new Ingenuity uh, IPA plugin that we're very excited about, which will be demoed in just a few minutes. So those are the key functions that are going into 16.2. And again, we're going to be branching that, uh, you know, in just uh, a week or two's time. And in 17.1, I think we've talked about uh, extensively. We've got the, uh, you know, requirements coordination meeting that is taking place tomorrow from 10 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. And uh, that's going to be a discussion. If you want to move on to that slide, uh, Keith. Great. So basically, we've completed the business analysis uh, portion of the project, which is effectively on a on a member by member basis. What they would like to see, we'll be working with the community to merge these into a final set of requirements. Uh, tomorrow, we will have a number of uh, meetings with potential vendors later this week. Uh, those vendor, uh, those vendor uh, workshops will be to present the merged requirements to the vendors, the Hive and uh, Deloitte, and then we'll be working to uh, kick those programs off by doing a vendor selection uh, in May. And uh, again, you know, the those will start uh, later this week with the vendor workshops. We'll be accepting uh, revised and final proposals from the vendors and then doing our vendor selection uh, a few weeks out. So that's where we stand with really 17.1. It's obviously a very exciting time for the foundation. We're very psyched about it. And uh, I think everybody knows that uh, 
you know, the, the core focus there is longitudinal data, scalable genomics. We expect to have um, some some news about uh, wearables that uh, that that will also possibly be popping into that release as well. Anyway, thank you very much. That's it, Keith. I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Um, before we leave the topic of uh, seventeen point one slash Transmart Pro, we have a question from Jay Bergeron. Uh, how will Transmart Pro be governed with the diversity of investment? And Jay, I can uh, I can unmute you if you'd like to. There we go. Participate. Um, so anyway, Keith, I don't know if you're still there. Yeah, no, I'm okay. here. Um, that's an excellent question. So we've been working very uh, diligently with uh, Linux Foundation to learn uh, the way that they've been able to to do collaborative development under this model. And to do this, we basically have a, a, a four-part approach. There's a, a foundation role. I explained that during my comments in terms of how we facilitate bringing together key stakeholders. Those stakeholders uh, form what's called a governing board or governing committee. And that group will then uh, oversee the entire project in terms of resource allocation, milestone development, contract approvals, uh, things of that nature. So that will be driven by the governing committee. There is a, a technical steering committee, which uh, will uh, be basically incorporated into what we use as the project management committee for the project. But in essence, these are the technical people involved in the actual code development, um, driving that code development, integrating it into the, the next release process. And then finally, there's an end user advisory uh, committee, uh, which is a group of end users that will uh, provide some input into various features as needed to make sure those features um, have um, a, a good user acceptance. So it's this four-part model where the, the foundation provides a support role, the governing committee manages the alliance, the technical steering committee manages the details of the project overall, and an end-user advisory group provides input on the usability of the features. Does that answer your question, Jay? Um, he's still muted, but I'll assume so, unless he uh, raises his hand again. So, okay. Um, and again, uh, a lot of this uh, material has been developing pretty pretty quickly over the last few days. So um, I will uh, make sure to organize it and get it up on the wiki uh, by Monday of next week. So uh, look for that. Okay. Um, next up, back to the window. We have the uh, newly announced uh, Ingenuity IPA connector. And what I'm going to do is make Niels and making the presenter. Uh, hello, Niels. Can you hear me? Can we hear you? What's your point? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, Niels. Hello. Okay. Can you also see my screen? Uh, let me make you the presenter, and then you should be able to. Okay. Is it? All right, so you should right. be presenting. Ah, okay, I can see it. Okay, great. great. So yes, thank you. Uh, so my name is Niels Christian. I'm with uh, ITTM in Luxembourg, um, a spin-off of the LCSB at the Luxembourg uh, University of Luxembourg. And uh, we have developed this um, <clears throat> Ingenuity Pathway Analysis Connector um, so Ingenuity Pathway Analysis is a software by Kyagene, and uh, so in short, it's just IPA. So um, in short, this uh, Ingenuity Pathway Analysis um, <clears throat> uh, allows to contextualize, contextualize your omics data and uh, um, show pathways that uh, like significantly changed uh, omics data is involved in and therefore uh, thereby give biological insight uh, into omics data so mainly by enrichment analysis and the um, core knowledge base behind uh, ingenuity is is a manually created uh, um, set of networks and that's what makes it really um, <clears throat> useful so in, in general, uh, the pipeline of using uh, IPA is, um, of course, you generate the data and then you perform, perform your statistics and then you hand it over to uh, IPA. So the natural uh, 
way to include uh, Transmart is obviously here. So uh, the whole process of um, <clears throat> normalization and statistics can be done preloading or at loading or then later on in Transmart or namely Smart R. <clears throat> we use Smart R as a backend and uh, instead of launching the Ingenuity Analysis um, client, we directly use their REST API to upload data and then to download the results. Um, so on a more technical level, it looks like this. Um, you might have seen how SmartR works. So SmartR is a plugin in Transmart. Um, it fetches data from, from the database, uh, passes it on to, um, to R, and uh, it reads back the results and then shows it uh, in the web browser. And here we use um, partially uh, the smart R um, backend, but instead we use uh, our IPA core plugin, which then uh, uses data that uh, is differentially expressed, sends it over to Ingenuity Pathway Analysis, waits for the results, and uh, then displays them in the browser. <clears throat> so, uh, unfortunately, I don't do a live demo, I just have some screenshots for you, but if you're really interested, uh, then we can later on also organize a live demo. But I think these, uh, uh, these screenshots should be fairly self-explained. So, what we have, what we have here in, is the, in the first, um, first we, in the comparison tab, we uh, select our cohorts. So we have just a, a, um, a public study um, uploaded here, and we select our cohorts. Then we click up here on the IPA core tab, and um, then we can drag in the high dimensional data, um, set the certain values for the uh, differential expression analysis, and then we can click on analyze differential expression. You will see a waiting screen. Uh, and after some time, you'll get back the results from R. So uh, you get presented with this uh, table. If you like, you can now adjust um, your, um, your parameters for the uh, differential expression analysis. And then you can click on the query IPA uh, button. And uh, you will then see that the data is being uploaded to IPA. Um, after some time, it uh, then it's uploaded and then it will wait for the results from IPA. This can take a few minutes, so you have to be patient or you can do other things in the meantime. Go back to this uh, window and, um, and you can then still look at the results later on. So at, after uh, some time, you will then be presented with um, certain tabs that uh, you could, um, the results so, sorry, uh, the tabs in, in this, uh, there are multiple tables, and you will get them, <clears throat> you can click on these tabs and get these results. Um, un until now, we don't have yet uh, um, a visual plugin as it is, uh, if you're familiar with the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis, they have more, um, <clears throat> um, more uh, possibilities, especially regarding uh, network visualization, but if you want to do that, you can um, go into your IPA client and then use the, um, the analysis project that you created using Transmart and then use the full functionality of IPA. <clears throat> so, um, with this, uh, I'd like to summarize. So, we have created a, a plugin for Ingenuity Pathway Analysis. It's based on the smart R backend, and it uses the REST API of IPA. It's a fully functional prototype, and we are uh, working on handing it over to the Transmart Foundation, and uh, the targeted release is uh, 16.2. And um, we are obviously also um, happy if someone else is interested in a similar project for different uh, software that um, provides a web service as the uh, Ingenuity Pathway Analysis does. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sascha Herzinger from the, uh, the lead Smart R developer who helped me a lot getting started with Smart R and uh, 
is um, Supervisor Reinhard Schneider. From Kaijen, we mainly talk to Stuart and Deborah. And uh, here within ITTM, Serge Eifes was also involved. He's also working on Smart R. So that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, if you want to contact us, these are our details. All right. Thanks very much, Niels. Um, that uh, that looks really interesting. Um, it's really nice to see that the work being done on Smart R is having uh, having an impact elsewhere as well, and, and forming the basis of additional functionality. Um, I will say that uh, if anyone uses IPA and is interested in uh, being an early adopter for this functionality, um, it's true that we want to work it into 16.2, but of course, you know the more the more hands-on uh, experience we get with it, the better. So, let us know if you if you're an IPA uh, user and you want to give this a try with uh, version 1.2.5 after it's out. Um, we'd be very interested in uh, in getting some some hands-on experience. So yes, most definitely. Just drop us an email and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so. Go back to me. Okay. All right. Are there any questions for Niels um, about uh, the IPA connector? If you if you have one, either type it in or raise your hand, and uh, we'll open up the phone lines for you. Uh, okay. Nothing yet, but uh, yeah. Okay. I, I see a couple of questions. One is how do you configure the IPA login? Oh, Did you see that question? Scroll down. There we go. Um, sorry. How how do you configure the IPA login? Yeah. Uh, currently, it's um, it has to be encoded in the config file of Transmart, but uh, we can think of other ways. So the thing is exactly this. IPA was in the beginning not made for multi multi user, um, so multiple users sharing one account. This is uh, we talked to uh, Ingenuity about this, and they are looking at a solution. But it's likely not um, will not be ready for 16.2. I don't know exactly what their plans are, but currently we you you plug it into the um, the config file. And, but if you can think of a better way, we're happy if you just want a form where you put in your login details, that would be fine for us as well. Okay. Um, and Jay asks, um, how is the connector licensed? Will it be, will it be open? Yes, uh, definitely. So we hand it over to the Transmart Foundation. So that means the same license, yes. Okay. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Awesome is the response. Sounds good. Um, Great. All right. Uh, Nitin, uh, we answered the, the questions about Transmart Pro. Uh, we answered a little earlier, namely that yes, um, Transmart Pro is going to be available to the whole community, and there will be information up on the wiki. I assume those are the ones you're you're asking about. Um, all right then. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, then I think we're finished for this uh, for this month's community call. Any other questions, comments? Is there anyone online that would like to to, to ask a question or make a comment? We can unmute you. Just raise your hand. Oh, we do have another question. How oh, we can link Transmart with PubMed? Um, that might be an offline question. Um, I tell you what, I would suggest that uh, if you could submit that question with more details to uh, support at transmartfoundation.org, um, we can we can take. Well, I, I could tell you some some work that we did in in, in the context of the Orion Bio Networks project. Keith, oh, okay. Um, we did do an integration with um, a knowledge platform uh, called Charisma, which uh, provided access to PubMed and a number of other things in terms of a, a knowledge base of uh, unstructured uh, information, unstructured documents. So if someone has an interest in that, just send something to, to as Keith said, to support at transmartfoundation.org, and uh, we can connect you with folks that, that uh, can help you with that. 
Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Thanks a lot, Keith. I think it's a, a, a great presentation there. There's a lot going on. I encourage people, um, as John said, uh, to come and join the, the project management committee, those PMC members uh, that should be a part of that. Um, as we go into the 16.2 program, we will be reaching out to the key developers of each of the features that will be integrated uh, to join the PMC to make sure that we are doing appropriate integration to help us you know, build the best possible release we can out of 16.2. Um, if there are any features that anyone wants to contribute to 16.2 that they've not yet done, please let us know because we'll be branching the code and getting to work on that shortly. Um, we were very pleased to see the announcement at uh, BioIT World about the, uh, the IPA connector. If there's anything else out there like this, you know, please let us know because we'd love to, to work with you to include those in the next release. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Keith, for organizing the meeting, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone.